let's go to Eclipse first of all and I'll run through what exactly is inside of the class. Okay, so inside the class, um, it's not a very long class, uh, it's just this, this one page. Okay, not very long. There's a demonstration that comes with the SDK for the Excel glove, which shows how you make a very basic class. However, that won't work because you're going to be running the Java inside of Mac, so it needs to work in a particular type of way. But there are clues in there which will get you up and running. Um, most of this segment here, this, this try-catch segment, um, was a copy and paste from the SDK. I didn't have to change um, pretty much anything there. I think there's only one line that's changed there. Um, down at the end here, all of this bit down at the end, um, none of that has changed. That is a copy and paste again. So there's really very, very, very little to make in here. Now, when you start off your... Um, your your Java file for the first time. This is my how my project folder displays inside of Eclipse. When you start it off, you need to import all of the um, jars that are in that lib folder um, for your project. So this is importing the Max one, and these are importing all the Glove jars. When you've done that, you need to make what's called a uh, public class, and you can call your class anything at all. I've called mine Exeliglov manual. Um, but whatever you call your class here, your public um, script or element here needs to have exactly the same name. Okay, same capitals and everything. And that will get called as soon as the um, class gets loaded as an object in Max. Now the class is extending a max object class so you need to state explicitly that it's that it extends max object that's the max jar and it's going to implement the data glove in max so you're using implements and something called glove connection listener um, which is inside one of those jars you're, you're calling a, um, a script inside of one of those jars so the first line in the class is you're declaring a, val a variable called g. The variable g is going to be a glove type variable. You can explicitly state in Java what type of variables you're going to be used. So this one is a, is a glove type. And you're going to use that g constantly um, within this script because when you connect to the glove, you're going to manage that connection, it's going to return any errors via that variable. So that's the first line. Inside this element, as I said, this is the bit which gets executed immediately um, but the object gets loaded inside of Max and it does uh, one of two things. The first thing it's going to try and make a connection to the glove if it manages to connect, then it will tell Max that it has connected. So the first line here is um, the G variable. You're going to make a new glove object, and then you're going to connect that object via the glove connection listener. If it manages to do that, then you're going to, as I said, tell Max that it has made a connection, and it's going to post something to the max window, um, post a message saying the Excel glove is connected. If it fails to make the connection, then it's going to catch it as an error, as an input output error, and it's going to uh, trace what the problem of the error is, which will effectively um, kill the error as well and stop it from from causing problems. Okay, so that's the initial connection to the glove. The next bit down here, we're still inside of the public class, is a, uh, a bang element. It's called public void bang and this is um, explicitly for Max. This, this bang element wouldn't work inside of uh, normal Java. There's no such uh, reference as bang unless you invent one. But 
when this is running inside of Max, it will expect um, a, a bang from a button or from a metro. We're going to use a metro, which is going to constantly bang this class, this Max object, um, so that it retrieves information from the glove. Inside of this this element, it's um, going to try to uh, do what's called a handshake with the glove, which is basically a retrieval of information, which is happening here, as you can see. Um, it's using a variable h, um, which is a handshake variable, and it's capturing the handshake via the variable g, which is the connection to the glove. If it manages to do the handshake, then it will convert what comes back through the variable h into a string, and then that string will be passed out through outlet 0 of the max object, which is the outlet on the left hand side. On the right hand side you have another outlet, so there's two outlets to this, this object, which I'll show you in a minute. It will send the number 1, and the number 1 is going to be um, true, basically, to tell max that yes, it's actually managing to connect to the glove and retrieve information, so it's going to show something visual. So we're going to basically turn on an LED, make it green, um, to say yes, there's information coming from the glove. If the try fails, then we've got two catch exceptions. Um, it can fail um, in two different ways. The glove could have an input-output exception, as it did previously, if it fails to actually connect to the glove itself, like we had up here. Okay, that was also a glove input output exception. So that's the first error it can have, and that, that's identical to above. If it does fail, then it's also going to put out that outlet 1 uh, as 0 this time um, to turn that LED off. The other exception that it can have is called a handshake exception, which means that it's still connected to the glove, but it hasn't managed to handshake it, retrieve information essentially. Um, that will also tell outlet 1 to turn the LED off. So either of those are errors and that LED will go from green back to red. The last two parts of the class, um, these were pretty much copy and paste from the SDK, I didn't have to change much at all. Um, this is essentially, uh, if you delete the object in Max, um, it will close the connection to the glove, so it tidies up after itself. And this last one here is uh, basically if um, you close the uh, patch with the um, with the object inside it, with the class inside it, or if you quit Max, then it's going to uh, again close the connection and tidy up after itself, and it's going to try and post something to the Max window if it still exists to tell it that the Excel glove has disconnected. Um, so all basic scenarios of of the object stopping to work, it will um, close it after itself and, and tidy up just in case you open it again and you want to make a new connection. Okay, so that is the class. Um, it's very easy. Uh, this is going to be in a zip, um, which is on the same web page as this video tutorial. So you can download this and compile it for your own version of Max. Okay, so into Max. Now, this first demo that I've got here is a very basic demo. Uh, I've got two demos. One is just showing how you actually connect to the glove. Both demos, again, will be in this zip that I put on the web page. Um, here you can see the MXJ object. This is the no compiled class as an object. To pull it into Max MSP, you use the same name that it had as the class name in um, Eclipse but you need to put mxj space in front of that so that Max recognizes that it's a Java class coming into Max. So running into our object, we've got a metro which is sending bangs. We now know that this is waiting for bangs and it will um, pull the glove for information when it retrieves, when it um, senses a bang. And then the two outlets that I mentioned before, this is outlet zero and this is outlet one. Outlet 0 will return the information from the glove as a 
a string, it turns it into a symbol, and then a list, and then the list of um, uh, there's three coordinates for each captor, x, y, and z. There's six captors, so there's 18 um, uh, bits of information essentially about the glove, which are then divided into their different elements the thumb, the index finger, the middle finger, the ring, the pinky, and the palm, each with its x, y, and z. On outlet one here, the right hand side, this is where the one and the zero comes out. If it's one, this will become green, which means that information is coming from the glove. If it's zero, then nothing is coming from the glove, and this will go back to being red. So as you can see at the moment, this is turned off, nothing is coming from the glove, it's red. Now, as soon as I loaded this, um, this patch, you can see here in the max window that it says the Excel glove is connected. So it's already connected to the glove, but it's not pulling the glove for information. So if we turn this on, the LED has now turned red, and you can see that the numbers down here are changing, which means that it's actually connecting and retrieving information from the glove. So let's just move each of the sensors and see what it does. So if I move the thumb first, you can see that that one is now moving a little bit more than the rest. If I move my index now, that's moving a little more than the rest. You can see that I'm moving most of them along the z-axis because that's um, the direction that my hand runs. This is the z-axis along here. If I move my middle, you can see that one is now moving a little bit more. If I move my ring finger, uh, this one I always have problems moving so I'm going to move it with my left hand. There we go. If I move my pinky, it's this one here, you can see that one is now moving, and my palm, rotate my palm, you can see that that one is moving, I can control the X quite well of that, I can make it go all the way down to zero almost, and all the way up to 255, which is the limit. The numbers all run from zero to 255, so that's what you're going to be working with in Max. Okay, so this is a very basic demo of how to connect. So let's turn that off and let's use something a little bit more interesting. So as soon as I closed the max patch there, you could see that it's now automatically disconnected. So the next time I open patch, it should be clear for that patch. If we check the max window there, it has indeed, it's now connected again um, anew to the glove. Now. This is a um, a copy of the other patch that I just showed you, and all on the left hand side is identical. So I'm going to cover it with this jitter window. Uh, you don't really need to see all of that on the left hand side. Perhaps useful to see numbers as they're moving. But what I've changed is on the right hand side, I've now added a jit win, which is this window here and I'm going to load a cube into a sketch in the JITWIN and I'm going to control either the position of the cube or the rotation of the cube. So first things first, let's turn on the JIT window. The cube is already there. Let's turn on the Metro going to the Excelli glove. That's now on. Now at the moment I'm sending information from the palm of the Excel glove to control the position of the um, of, of the cube in Jitter. So if I start moving the glove along the different axes, let's try tilting it left and right. There we go. You can see that the glove is mainly moving left, mainly moving right. Okay, now let's move it along a different axis. Okay, so the y axis is, is up and down for the cube. And there is another axis, the z axis, but I'm never quite sure how to control the other axis. It should move it in and out. You can see I'm kind of getting it there when I move it that way. It's kind of moving in and out. Okay, now this is just a demonstration of. Um, of principle, you can see that 
uh, the cube really should be centered over here. It's I've not compensated. Um, the, the flatness of the glove should be compensated to center the cube, and then it should work from the center. Okay, so that's position. You can also control the rotation. So if we get rid of these connections to position like that, and let's connect the x coordinate of the palm to the rotation of the cube. Let's lock our patch again. And now that I'm not controlling the position anymore, I can I can move these to zero to center it so we can see it a little bit better. There we go, that'll do. And um, this is the x, y, and z coordinate of the rotation, so I'm going to um, move the z coordinate. So if I move the glove left and right, I should be able to move the x and y of the glove. So I'll put my hand down on the table again, and let's move that back to zero. Uh, if we change the x to one this time, now when I move the glove left and right, I can tilt the cube forward and backwards. Move that back to zero. And let's try the y. Again, move the glove left and right. And I'm now moving the cube left and right. Okay, so that's how you connect a uh, an Excel glove to Max MSP. Um, all of these files that I've showed you, they'll all be uh, on the page with this tutorial. Um, uh, so go and make something interesting, some sort of performance or maybe installation with this. And uh, if you do, make sure you tell me about it.